Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar and this is the first course. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, lilaya. Vishvesham satchidanandam, vandeham yokhilan jagat. Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, lilaya. In this course, we have concentrated on the Tatpurusha Samasa. And we have been saying that Tatpurusha Samasa is by far the most productive of the Samasa in Sanskrit. There are four types of Samasas generally known Avyayi Bhava, Tatpurusha, Bahurihi, and Dvandva in that order stated in the grammar of Panini. Amongst them, Tatpurusha is of a particular kind and particular feature. We also have been saying that Panini has explained the Tatpurusha Samasa with numerous sutras in comparison with the other Samasas. Be it the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra or the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra or the Samasa Svara Vidhayaka Sutra, Tatpurusha Samasa has taken a major chunk of all these sutras. The derivation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be summed up in brief in the form of an equation mentioned on this particular slide. Here you have X and Y as the two constituents, independent constituents independent and separate in terms of the meaning and also in terms of the word form and also in terms of the accent. X has a different meaning, Y has a different meaning. X and Y have different word forms and X and Y both have different, different accents. But they are semantically related to each other. And so the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge them together and generate an output in the form of x, y, which is now one unit. So x, y is one unit in terms of one meaning and also in terms of one word form and also in terms of one accent. So this is the ekarthi bhava. The three features of ekarthi bhava are Aikarthya, Aikapadya and also Aikasvarya. In the Tatpurusha Samasa, when XY becomes one unit, Y assumes the position of the head. Generally, Y is the second member of the compound or the Uttara Pada. What it means is that when XY as one unit is related to any other external unit in the sentence, the unit XY will be related to that external unit through the head, namely Y. If X is related to any other external unit without going through Y, then such a compound is treated as an exception to the by default theory and such a compound is mentioned as a samartha samasa in general. We also said that Tatpurusha samasa has got a huge sub varieties. We have studied one of them in detail namely 
the vibhakti tatpurusha we studied the dvitiya tritiya chaturthi panchami saptami and then shashti in this order as stated by panini in his grammar and then we stated that this highlights the fact that the karaka system and the karaka theory forms the base of the compounding and the samartha theory then we started studying the karma dharaya compound the karma dharaya compound is stated in the second adhyaya first pada from the sutra 49 onwards up to the end of 21 that is 72 karma dharaya is defined in panini's grammar as tatpurushah samanadhikaranah karma dharaya 1242 this sutra means that tatpurusha in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent is termed karma dharaya i repeat that tatpurusha in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent is termed karma dharaya the state of being samanadhikarana is samanadhikaranya and this is explained in the following manner bhinna pravrutti nimittasya anekasya shabdasya ekasmin narthe vrittihi samanadhikaranyam many words which are used with different purpose of usage when they stand for one and the same meaning then they are said to be co-referential having samanadhikaranya as a relation between them this is how samanadhikaranya or samanadhikaranatta is explained in the paninian grammatical tradition after having seen the very important sutra visheshanam visheshena bahulam and also some other sutras stating the karma dharaya samasa let us now proceed further to study some more sutras now we are studying khtena nai vishishtena anai 2160 this sutra has got three padas khtena nai vishishtena and anai khtena is 31 of kth meaning with the word ending in the suffix kth nai vishishtena is also 31 with the word having a negation marker namely nai and this goes with khtena so kth should be such that it has got nai it is qualified by nai and anai a non negation word this is in prathama ekavachana and this means not having nai because this is prathama this will be termed upasarjana and by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then upasarjanam purvam will ensure that such a word occupies the initial position of the compound what is known as purva nipata words continued are sup and sahasupa and also samartha padavidhi and also samanadhikaranena with the same referent now the meaning of the sutra is the following any subanta whose pratipadika ends in the suffix kth but which does not denote negation is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta whose pratipadika ends in the suffix kth and which is qualified with a negation i repeat any subanta whose pratipadika ends in the suffix kth but which does not denote negation is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta whose pratipadika ends in the suffix kth and which is qualified with a negation this can be shown in the form of the following equation so we have anai plus su as the first subanta any word which is 
not qualified with an i and an i plus su is the first subanta and then we have the second subanta in the form of an i plus kth as the first member of the pratipadika an i plus kth plus su and in this case the finally derived compound output would be an i and an i plus kth for example when we have the meaning to be expressed namely that which is done and not done something is done as well as not done so we have kritam cha tad akritam cha so the word krita and akrita they both are referring to one and the same entity and so they are samanadhikarana they are semantically related and so now the samasa is going to take place on account of the present sutra now krita is such that it ends in the suffix ta which is kta so this is a ktant but there is no negation over here it is not qualified by a negation whereas in this case krita which is also a ktant is qualified by a negation now this krita which is not qualified by a negation is compounded with this krita which is qualified by a negation when both of them are co-referential so we have the compound and so krita plus su plus akrita plus su and there is samasa saudnya and then there is pratipadika saudnya and then supo dhatu pratipadika jo applies and deletes both the sups so we have krita plus zero plus akrita plus zero and then we have krita akrita we join them together doing the savarna dirgha sandhi and we get the finally derived compound output in the form of krita akrita which denotes the same meaning as kritan cha tad akritan cha that which is done and also not done similarly if the meaning conveyed is that which is eaten and not eaten now we have bhuktam cha tad abhuktam cha so bhukta is the ktant word with the verbal root bhuja now this ktant is not qualified by a negation whereas we have the word abhukta which also has bhukta which is qualified by a negation and so they are co-referential so they get compounded because of this particular sutra and so now we have bhukta bhuktam bhukta bhukta as the finally derived output and bhukta bhuktam as the case ending similarly when the meaning intended to be conveyed is that which is drunk and not drunk pitancha tad apitancha pita and apita are the two words pita is derived from the verbal root pa by adding the suffix kt now this is not qualified by a negation marker nai whereas apita also has, has got pita which is derived once again by adding the suffix th to the verbal root pa but this word is qualified by a negation marker namely a so now we have pitan cha tad apitan cha where pita and apita are co-referential they are referring to one and the same entity and so now the compound takes place between them and we get pita pita as the finally derived compound output and then pita pitam will be the case ending the subanta because the sutra says ktena nai vishishtena anai so the word ktena was used and therefore now there is an addition of some more words done by this particular statement kritap krita dinam upasankhyanam which means additionally we should add the group of words beginning with kritap krita these are the words without the negation marker in them so they have an additional preverb upasarga also so for example just as you do krita krita you can also do krita apakrita so apakrita does not have any negation 
but that is included in this particular group and the later commentators have observed that the compound has taken place in these two subantas because they are semantically related. Similarly, bhukta vibhukta. Now, vibhukta consists of an additional upasarga v which denotes some particular sense. Now, there is no nai here, but because of this particular statement, bhukta and vibhukta, because they are co-referential, they get compounded and we get the form bhukta vibhukta. Similarly, pita vipita where V is a preverb or an upasarga and Pita is compounded with Vipita as part of this particular group of words. Now we come to one more very important statement found in the tradition. Samanadhi karanadhikare shakaparthivadinam upasankhyanam uttara pada lopascha What it means is that in this Adhikara of Samanadhikarana, that is from 2149 up to 72, we should also add the group of words beginning with Shaka Parthiva and in their derivation, the Uttarapada should be deleted. We repeat, in this Adhikara of Samanadhikarana, from 2149 to 40, 72, we should also add the group of words beginning with Shakaparathi were and in their derivation the Uttarapada should be deleted. Now this compound stated by this particular statement is also referred to in the later and modern texts on Sanskrit grammar as Madhyama Padalopi because we see Shakapriyaha Parthivaha and Priya gets deleted and so they say that this is a Madhyama Pada Lopi. But if we observe very closely, we find that we have the meaning namely a king who loves vegetables, Shakapriyaha Parthivaha. Now Shakapriya is already a compound in which Priya is the Uttara Pada. So this is not the compound of Shakaha Priyaha Parthivaha, no. This is Shakapriyaha Parthivaha, a compound of two Padas. And Shakapriya is one of those two padas in which Priya is the Uttara Pada. And so, if anything is getting deleted, it is the Uttara Pada of one compound. And that is the reason why in the tradition such a compound is described as the Shakaparathiva with the Uttara Pada Lopa. So we have Shakapriyaha Parthivaha as the Laukika Vigraha. And then the Alaukika Vigraha is Shaka Priya plus Su plus Parthiva plus Su. Now Shaka Priya has got two constituents, Shaka plus Su plus Priya plus Su. And now we notice that this is the Uttarapada in Shaka Priya. So this Uttarapada gets deleted. And so we have Shaka plus zero, where Su is also deleted by Supodhatu Pratibhadika Yoho. And Priya is deleted by the statement and now Parthiva plus zero because of Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and the finally derived output in the form of a compound is Shaka Parthiva which means a king who loves vegetables. There is slight difference as far as the finally derived compound output and the Laukika Vigraha. Similarly, when we have the meaning, a king who loves gods, Deva Priyaha Parthivaha, similar process happens and we have Deva Priya plus Su plus Parthiva plus Su and here we note once again that Priya is the Uttarapada of Deva Priya. And so because of the statement, this Uttarapada, the Priya is deleted along with the Sups over here by the Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and so we get Deva plus zero plus Parthiva plus zero and Deva Parthiva as the finally derived compound output which means a king who loves gods. Deva Priyaha Parthivaha. So this is Uttara Pada Lopi but it is generally described 
madhyama as madhyama padalopi probably without taking the internal structure and the overall derivation process into account now the next sutra is san mahat paramottamotkrishtaha pujyamanehi 2161 now in this sutra we have five we have two padas sat mahat param uttama utkrishtaha which is prathama bahuvachana and pujyamanehi which is tritiya eka tritiya bahuvachana now the words are which are constituents of the first word are sat mahat param uttama and utkrishtaha and because they are in prathama they will be termed upasarjana because of prathama nirdishtam samase upasarjanam and then upasarjanam purvam will ensure that they occupy the initial position of the compound as is known as purva nipata pujyamanehi is instrumental case which means those who are respected or worshipped so with the words denoting those who are worshipped the words sat mahat etc get compounded the words continued are sup and sahasupa samartha padavidhi of course and also samanadhi karanena which is in instrumental case which means with the same referent so the meaning is any subanta whose pratipadika is either of sat mahat param uttam utkrisht is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta whose pratipadika denotes praiseworthy repeat any subanta whose pratipadika is either of sat mahat param uttam and utkrisht is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta whose pratipadika denotes praiseworthy so we have sat plus su and pujyamana plus su as input and sat pujyamana as the compound output now the examples here we have the meaning namely a noble man so sat cha asau purushaha this is the laukika vigraha where sat and purusha are referring to one and the same entity so they are co-referential so there is semantic relatedness and therefore there is a compound and so we have the samasa saudnya with the alaukika vigraha satsu plus purusha su after that there is pratipadika saudnya and so supodhatu pratipadika jo ho applies and both the su are deleted so we have sat plus 0 plus purusha plus 0 and so we have sat purusha as the finally derived compound output similarly we have the meaning namely the great man now this meaning is expressed by mahancha asau purushaha this is the laukika vigraha mahancha asau purushaha here the word mahan and purusha they both are referring to one and the same entity so there is co-referentiality and so there is semantic relatedness so there is compounding that takes place and so now you have mahat plus su plus purusha plus su as the alaukika vigraha and so now the samasa saudnya takes place and so the pratipadika saudnya takes place and supodhatu pratipadika jo applies and both the supratyayas are deleted so we have mahat plus 0 plus purusha plus 0 now the sutra an mahatas samanadhikarana jatiya yo ho prescribes the substitution of a in place of t in the environment of samanadhikarana uttara pad so we have mah a plus purusha and then the sandhi takes place and we get the output in the form of mahapurusha 
which is the finally derived compound output. So Mahat plus zero and Purusha plus zero on this stage, An Mahatas Samanadi Karana Jati Yajoho applies. This is 6346. This sutra substitutes A in place of the final sound in Mahat, namely T, when it is followed immediately by a co-referent word and the suffix Jatiya. So from Mahat plus zero, we get Maha A plus zero. And then we got Mahapurusha as the finally derived compound output. Similarly, when we have the meaning the Supreme Being, we will derive Paramapurusha as the compound output. Also, the same meaning will be expressed by the compound output Uttama Purusha. And when the meaning is the best man, the compound output would be Utkrishta Purusha, where Parama, Uttama and Utkrishta are the words mentioned in the Sutra and Purusha is the Pujya Mana. And there is the semantic relatedness which is the basic condition for the process of compounding to take place. To summarize, in the Karmadharaya compound, several subtypes are found and stated by later and modern scholars and Madhyamapadalopi is one such type. It is actually the deletion of the Uttarapada that is taking place over there. But it looks like the deletion of the middle word and that's why some texts call it Madhyama Padalopi. Similarly, there is another type of Visheshana Ubhaya Pada also stated. And these types are stated in the modern texts and they need to be studied very closely in the light of the Paninian system and the sutras laying down this particular system. We continue to study some other sutras stating the Karmadharaya compound in the next lecture. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.